This is a case of a young woman who initially presented at the age of 16. She was ultimately found to have a right cochleofacial nerve dehiscence and was treated with round window reinforcement surgery in 2013. Her history began after having her third concussion in April of 2010 after falling down the stairs. At that time, her memory was impaired, and this lasted approximately two months and gradually resolved over time. In December of 2012, she contracted the flu and was vomiting severely. This was associated with the acute onset of migraine headaches, light sensitivity, speech production and fluency problems, as well as gravitational receptor dysfunction type of vertigo due to otolithic asymmetry. She also experienced postural discontrol. With the onset of her third window syndrome symptoms, she developed constant headaches and daily migraine headaches. Prior to this, she'd never had migraines before. Her headache impact test score was 64, placing her in the worst class, namely that of class four. She also experienced photophobia, but had no migraine variants. There was no family history of migraine. When I saw her initially, she had third window syndrome symptoms. Loud sounds would induce migraine headaches, as well as dizziness and difficulty with her balance. Her dizziness handicap inventory score was 56, placing her in a severe handicap category. In addition, she was extremely sound sensitive, and loud sounds were quite painful to her. She also experienced autophony in her right ear. Her voice was echoey and resonant, and she could hear her eyes blinking in her right ear when in the quiet. She also was experiencing cognitive dysfunction. Her academic performance had declined, and in fact her family needed to withdraw her from school. Her memory was impaired, and she had impaired concentration as well. She had speech fluency and production problems, as a later video will show. Prior to my evaluation, other diagnoses had been considered and even assigned. Post-concussive syndrome due to mild traumatic brain injury was one such diagnosis. A seizure disorder was another. And finally, conversion disorder was thought to be the etiology of her problem and psychiatric intervention had been recommended to the family. Her audiogram revealed that she had bilateral pseudoconductive hearing loss. Her cervical vestibular evoked myogenic potential study revealed that she had a reduced threshold at 80 dB on the left side, which was the asymptomatic side. On the right, which was found to have the cochleofacial nerve dehiscence, there was no response. At the time of her surgery in August 2013, the existence of cochleofacial nerve dehiscence resulting in the third window syndrome was not known. I thought that she initially had a CT negative third window syndrome and performed a right round window reinforcement surgery for this. Subsequent review of her high resolution temporal bone CT in March of 2019 revealed that she in fact had a right cochleofacial nerve dehiscence. The images on the top show the cochlea colorized as blue and the facial nerve colorized in yellow. The traditional images are shown on the top left while an inverted image is shown on the top right. Normally there is a bony partition between these two structures. In the images below, you can see that there is a direct connection between these two structures. To follow are a series of preoperative videos recorded by this child's father. I performed right round window reinforcement surgery on 28 August 2013. Are you having a hard time walking? No, I'm, I'm getting. Okay. It's. Mm. Mm. I'm betting. I'm betting. No. It's. I'm hurts. I'm hurts. I'm. I'm it's got old. It's got old.
On 28 August 2013, I performed a right round window reinforcement surgery. As mentioned earlier, I initially thought that she had a CT negative third window syndrome, which she refers to as a perilymph fistula. In March of 2019, I reviewed her high resolution temporal bone CT and found that she had an unrecognized right cochlear facial nerve dehiscence. To follow her three separate videos, the first one day after her surgery, the second two months after her surgery, and finally six months after her surgery. Um, <laughs> so I just had my surgery yesterday and I was already feeling a ton better. Um, before my surgery, like in December when this first started, I couldn't talk properly. I had like a clicking sound in my voice and no one really could understand what I was saying. And I had really bad headaches. I've had headaches for a while, but then it like increased at that point. Um, I also had balance issues and memory issues. And when I went to the doctor to figure out what was wrong in the hospital, they kind of just dismissed me as like having conversion disorder and like some people said I was crazy and it was all in my head, which I mean clearly it's not true because I'm already feeling like loads better, like my headache is like not even here so, anymore. Two months ago I had a surgery and before I had my surgery done I had problems with loud noises, especially um, noises going on at the same time. I couldn't process information. It was really hard for me to speak. Um, I had a very intense headache every day, um, my entire head. Uh, I had balance issues. My legs would fall out from underneath me. I couldn't walk like a straight line. Um, now, the only problem I have to deal with is that I have a very small headache and compared to what I've dealt with, it's like not even a problem at all. Um, I don't even notice it unless I'm paying attention to it. Um, I don't really know what else to say. And what happened in the past when you were exposed to loud sounds? Um, well, it was really hard for me to think and process things. My headache would increase. Um, sometimes I would just collapse um, or I couldn't speak or I don't know, understand what people were saying to me. About six months after my surgery to repair a parallel fistula in my right ear, before the surgery, I missed a lot of my school. Multiple noises and loud noises bothered me. I couldn't handle them. I also couldn't read, write, or at times even talk or walk. Um, now I'm going to school every day. I am keeping up with all of my classes. I don't need more time. I can read and write and talk perfectly fine and walk as well. Um, what about headaches? Did you ever have trouble with that? Oh, I had uh, lots of headaches a really intense headaches before the surgery and now I have no headaches almost every single day. It's really rare for me to get a headache and even when I do get a headache it's nothing compared to what it was before. Another way to objectively measure the impact of vestibular disorders on a patient is with the dizziness handicap inventory. This is a self-assessment inventory that quantifies the self-perceived impact of dizziness on everyday life. This is a 25-item validated survey instrument. It will also quantify the effects of treatment of vestibular system disease, and the rationale is that effective management should be reflected by an individual's ability to resume his or her pre-morbid vocational and recreational activities. 
Another tool for evaluating the impact of headaches and migraine headaches is the headache impact test. This too is a self-assessment inventory that includes a six item validated survey instrument. The results are classified ranging from class one with the best and least impact to class four, which has the most impact on a patient's life as a consequence of their migraine headaches. Both of these tools were used to evaluate and measure the improvement of her surgical intervention. With the dizziness handicap inventory, her initial score was 56, representing a severe handicap, and this dropped to zero postoperatively. The headache impact test preoperatively scored 64, placing her in the worst class, namely that of class four. After her surgery, she became a class one with a score of 36, which is the best possible score using the survey instrument. This final video records her perception of her post-operative symptoms nearly four years after her right round window reinforcement surgery. And let's see, I'm doing well. I'm in college now and pursuing my bachelor's degree. Uh, it's been four years now, almost four years since I've had my surgery and I'm doing well. No um, symptoms at all? Nope, no symptoms at all. Are you doing any uh, physical activities? Oh, uh, walking, but not really. <laughs> Nothing hardcore? I'm not like an <laughs> intense uh, athletic person. Okay. In summary, after round window reinforcement surgery for cochleofacial nerve dehiscence, the sequelae of the vestibular asymmetry and third window syndrome symptoms can be reversed. Cognitive dysfunction and spatial disorientation is reversible. The autophony is reversible. Nausea is reversible. And finally, sound-induced dizziness or otolithic or gravitational receptor asymmetries is also reversible. Migraine headaches resolve or are markedly improved such that medical management is able to control the migraine.